Hi everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the characteristics of links in technical objects. So the first thing that we really need to make sure that we understand is a concept of a technical object. So a technical object has two criteria. One, it has to be man-made. And the second, it has to serve a purpose. So this is extremely broad and that means that anything that takes raw materials and transforms it into an object is by definition a technical object. So if I'm looking at a basic technical object, my coffee mug is a technical object because number one, it is made by humans to serve a particular function. Hold coffee or, you know, tea, hot chocolate, whatever. Another example of a technical object, this one, all of you probably have or have used it, cell phone, made by humans, serves a particular function. So when we're looking at the characteristics of links, we're really looking at how the parts are put together and how they function in the object in general. So what is a link? So a link, based on what the, the, the name link uh, says, uh, is anything that has the function of putting two parts together. So a link can be done by any component that connects different parts in your object. So uh, when we're talking about a link, we can actually uh, characterize it by four categories. And all of these categories are very distinct. And another thing that's actually really important is that in any given object, you have multiple links. Meaning that the characteristics of one particular link is not going to be the same as the characteristics in another link. So after we go through the four categories of uh, the four characteristics of a link, we'll actually are going to examine a technical object and we'll go into that in a lot more detail. So if we're looking at our four categories, our first is something called direct versus indirect. Now, in direct versus indirect, it's really concerned on how the parts are connected to each other. So uh, if I'm looking at the my coffee mug, I would see a link between the handle and the mug. So how the handle and the mug are connected to each other, I would be looking at whether it's a direct connection or an indirect connection. The second category of describing a link is uh, whether the link is rigid versus flexible. And this is really talking about the materials that form the link. And what's really important to understand is that the materials forming the link is also related to the purpose. So, for instance, if we were doing um, talking about a mechanical pencil and we were talking about the, one of the linking components in the mechanical pencil and we had a spring, well, if the whole purpose of the mechanical pencil is to be able to push the end for lead to come out, well, why would we be using a spring compared to something else? The third characteristic is removable versus non-removable. And just as the name suggests, it's how the components can be separated from one another. Um, another way that people tend to use uh, non-removable, they also use the word permanent but uh, they mean the exact same thing. And our last category is uh, something that's called complete versus partial. And in this, it's really talking about the degree of movement found within the link. So what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be going through all of these um, categories in detail to describe what they mean. So for our first one is the concept of whether the link is direct. 
And if the link is direct, you have no linking component required. So if I'm looking at these puzzle pieces, they just snap into place. They don't need anything like glue or tape or uh, nails or screws to put them in together. They just snap into place. On the opposite side, an indirect link requires something to put them together. So a linking component is a piece of material that puts the two parts together. So there's a large uh, variety of linking components. If we're looking at this example right here, the glue puts the two pieces of wood together. So in this case, the glue acted as the linking component. so that our pieces of wood are linked. Now, this is just one example. There are a multitude of examples, things like uh, glue, things like sticky tack, nails, screws, all of those things can act as linking components. So in our example right here, our glue our glue was the linking component. So direct, no linking component. Indirect, I need something to bridge the gap between those two materials to put them together. In our next category, so we have rigid versus direct, uh, rigid versus flexible. So if something is rigid, the linking component and or their surfaces are rigid. So if we're looking at rigid, it means that it is not going to deform. So if we're looking at an example of the link, so if I'm looking at an example, the link between the uh, top of the desk, so the link between the desk top and the legs, well, so right here, this would actually be a rigid link because the surface of both the desktop and the lead, the, the legs, they don't deform. They keep their shape. The opposite to rigid would be flexible. We're in a flexible link. The linking component or the surface can be deformed and returned to its original position. And the key thing that I need to state is that only one of the two ah, I spelled two wrong the two components needs to be able to do this so uh, things that would make the link flexible is if you have a spring in the link, depending on the type of rubber, sticky tack. So if I'm looking at this right here, if I'm looking at the link between the spring and the uh, wall mount, right, I can see that the spring deforms due to the mass, but it's going back to its original position. Now, only one of the components in here is actually deforming. The spring is actually the deforming. The Walmart mount is staying, uh, keeping its original shape, but for a link to be flexible, only one of the two components needs to actually deform. So if we're going to look at the next slide, we have an example of a car. So if I'm looking at the, uh, sorry, not a car, a motorcycle. And if I'm looking at this, I actually have two um, examples of where I have a flexible link. The first being at the springs. That's basically the shock absorber on the motorcycle. It's constantly deforming. And even though the springs are attached to the, the wheel axle and the wheel axle is maintaining its shape, because the springs are deforming, this is considered a flexible link. Now, if I'm looking at also between the tire 
and the uh, rim, the tire is deforming because of the contact that's happening with the road. So the tire, the rubber part of the tire is deforming, but the rib, which is usually uh, made out of uh, metal, is keep its, keeping its shape. But because the tire itself is deforming, the link between the tire and the rim would also be considered flexible. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at the concept of removable versus non-removable. And as the name suggests, it's relatively straightforward. If a link is removable, the parts can be separated. And the key thing here is without damage. So that means it is designed to be separated. So if we're looking at uh, the two examples that I have right here, the first I have is between a nut and a bolt and I can see from my video right here is that the nut can move and can be removed from the bolt so whenever I'm, I'm linking two components together that I want to be able to separate at a later part I would use something like a nut and a bolt because it is a removable link another example right here is the link that I have between the can and the cap, right? The cap is designed to come off of the can so I can use uh, my aerosol in the can. So both of these are examples of removable links. Now, just like removable means I can separate it, non-removable means that if I try to separate it, damage happens. Why? Because it is not designed to separate, right? So an example that I can think of is anytime I use something with like glue or anytime I use something with nails, those are designed to be permanent. So I wouldn't want to be separating them. So if I'm thinking back to a few, slide, uh, a few minutes earlier where I had the animation of the two pieces of wood stuck together by glue, well, that would be a non-removable link. I used glue because I did not want to separate those two components. And if you try to separate them, damage is going to happen. Now, the last um, category is this concept of complete versus partial. So if I have a complete link, the parts cannot move independent of each other. So that means there are no movements in between my links. So if I'm looking back to the two pieces of wood stuck together, because my wood is stuck together, my wood, so my wood piece number one and number two can't move. They're like a package deal. They're connected permanently to one another. So there is no movement in between my two parts. Um, another example of this would be the link between my mug and my handle. There is no movement independent of the handle and the mug. So this would be a complete link in this scenario. Partial means that there is independent movement. So if I'm looking at a partial link, one of the two links can move independent of one another. And the key thing, it is part of the function. So if I'm looking at, so an example, anything that has hinges. So for instance, right, hinges, we would find these on doors. Uh, another place that you would find these are on laptops. And I have independent motion from one part to the other part, because as I can see right here, the top part of the hinge is moving independent of the bottom. Another example would be the door, right? Because if I'm looking at the door, what is allowing the door to move are hinges that the, board, the door can open and close and 
uh, that movement is allowed because of the hinges. So uh, this is basically our summary of all of the characteristics of the link. In our next video, I'm actually going to be analyzing the links in variety of different objects. Have a nice day.